This week on MS Refresh, an overblown retraction on the Microsoft side, plus a bunch of stuff that's supposedly due by the end of this month. All that and more. Subscribe to stay in the know. This is the MS Refresh Show. Hi there, and welcome to the Matt and Sean 365 Refresh Show. This is episode 46 for the work week of November 22nd, 2021. Happy Thanksgiving to our U.S. viewers and coming to you from the East Coast. My name is Matt Wade. And I'm Sean Bugler on the West Coast. Well, hello, Sean. How are you? Happy almost Thanksgiving, Matt. Yeah. Right back. That's, uh, are, you, uh, are you doing any family bonanzas? Uh, yeah, actually. So this will be the first Thanksgiving we've had in, uh, I think, uh, I guess we skipped Two last years. year. Yeah, ish, yeah. So um, it'll be good to see some of the cousins and stuff like that. But it's something, nothing too huge. Sure. Just like, you know, the the inner circle. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I hear that. I'm uh, I'm doing something similar. We're outdoors. Um, yeah, my grandparents are going stir crazy. And so it's a it's a good opportunity to to see everybody and drink a lot of really bad beer. <laughs> see, we, your, we uh, drink we drink really good wine on our Thanksgivings. My my mm -hmm. uh, my aunt is a bit of a of a wino and uh, she gets the very nice bottles of wine that I would never purchase. But they are very good Ooh. yeah yes. now so uh i have this running theory that every family has uh what i call a dynasty beer Ooh. that's a, a a beer that is like the it doesn't matter who's hosting the family event depending on the side of the family it's like this is like my family's is Coors light it doesn't matter what the event is how far back you go grandparents uncles whoever if you're going to an event you know like a bugler event Coors light is guaranteed to be like the beer of choice and like you know other like better beers but like that's the safe one we don't have anything like that so really some, some folks in my family don't at all um and then others they just kind of have whatever individual you know has their preference so like i know like my grandfather um when you know when he was alive first and two when he was drinking uh genesee was his beer of choice do you know genesee beer i've never heard of that all right, Western New York classic uh, that you know spread probably into the Northeast ish, but uh, probably didn't get very far outside of there. And uh, the, one of the versions of it was, was cream ale, so they had Jenny cream ale, and that's what I've always heard of. But uh, <laughs> I don't know, my dad was always a, a Sam Adams guy, but he doesn't really drink anymore. So like, I don't know. Sure, it's a. I had never heard anybody say like Natty Ice before, but Ooh, since natty, I started yeah, running, yeah, yeah that's it. This just in. Oops. <laughs> See what those errant clicks will do to you? Anyway, Natty Ice, you were saying? Yeah, you know, like that's for anybody that's joining us uh, from across the <clears throat> pond. Uh, Natty Ice is like Spring we make college. jokes about like, oh, yeah, like we make jokes about like Bud Light and Coors Light. But like Natty Ice, uh, natural ice is truly and honestly oh, the yeah. worst one. Yep. That it's one's that one's the closer to like just reach into a dirty river and scoop up some water. Yes, that is a really great description. That is very, very apt. Yeah. Um, so yeah, not a whole, you know, bunch scheduled, but I am looking forward to a couple of days off and just, uh, you know, enjoying some relaxation time. But um, so we were kind of chatting a little bit about what we would do with this episode because uh, we didn't go through what we would normally do, which is like kind of really pull some of the items out from the roadmap. Uh, instead, we, we decided to just grab a few sort of big ones that, that stood out to us that are due supposedly at the end of this month. Um, I thought the funny part was that a number of them we have reported on being due multiple months at this point. So yeah, it's not us just having like a, a stroke or something like that. We know, we know <laughs> we've yet. said these before. It's yeah. not our fault that these things we keep swear. getting marked as being due for release. Yes. I like that. It's not our fault. So we're just going to kind of go back and uh, I think, Sean, you're going to lead off on the uh, on each of the ones. We'll talk a little bit about each one and like sort of the impact if it has one or if, if it stands out to us. And we'll kind of uh, do that sort of thing. That sound good? Yeah, let's do it. All righty. Um, what do you got first? Well, first I've got... This is the news. I forgot. I did it before. <laughs> it was already done, man. We've already checked Killing it off the here. list. Kill me here. Uh, first, we've got Microsoft Lists, Microsoft's Project Nucleus, 
uh, Project Offline Nucleus. Mode. Project Nucleus. Yeah, uh, supposedly uh, finally coming online. Uh, now, Matt, you and I have been talking about this previously. The web app, the progressive web app, has been yep. around for quite some time, at least yeah, for a, a while months now. Yeah, and I actually thought that that meant that offline mode for lists was was here. I just assumed that the web app existed. What point is there for the web app if it's not for the offline, which I realize it's convenience. But yeah, you, you schooled me on that one beforehand. <laughs> yeah, uh, and so to that end, the, this would you know unlock the capacity to our knowledge. To the best of our knowledge, this still remains a Windows-only capability. It's taking advantage of the OneDrive Sync client app behind the scenes, if I remember correctly. So I'm actually not sure if it's just a Windows only thing because there is a OneDrive progressive web app for Mac OS. I wonder, like, why would they make the one and not the other? Because it's all based on the same tech. When they originally announced this feature, they had scoped it specifically to Windows. So my presumption is all they're right. still going to kind of keep it that way for now. Mm -hmm. uh, but to that end, I can't imagine they're not having those conversations around. Yeah pushing Definitely. it forward. Yep, um, I agreed. But a welcome change. I mean, I think that this isn't just about offline access. It's also about caching uh, so that you can interact with these really, you know, multi-thousand record lists uh, fairly quickly. So that'll be a nice yeah. change of pace. Yeah. Um, so, so what do you think? Is this a good one? Yeah, this is a good one. Yeah, this is a good one. Yeah. All right. Let's go ahead and jump to number two. Microsoft list app in Teams is picking up the rules capability. So you can create simple if-then rules based on changes to list information, to set reminders, send notifications directly within Microsoft Teams. Uh, an important caveat here that users with edit permissions on the lists are the only the ones who can create and manage these rules. Ooh. So read-only users cannot create or manage rules, which is disappointing when you think about the reminder feature, like the this idea of being able to like remind yourself when certain values hit like a specific date, for example. Well, I guess the question is, does that, uh, is the same limitation uh, in lists itself or is this just a Teams thing? It's a good question. I don't and actually I know. I haven't played enough as a, I don't think, I've, I don't think I'm don't think i a, a read-only person in almost any SharePoint site that I'm involved with. So as a global know what admin, it's like I'm not to either. Be <laughs> such a, you know, such a nobody in the SharePoint <laughs> space that I run. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and of course, for anybody that doesn't know, this functionality already exists in the web browser, the, the SharePoint experience. This is simply unlocking that capacity, uh, which Microsoft has been doing with a lot of different um, modern experiences and teams over the past couple of months. It's just been enabling it with a custom Teams experience that's yeah. already available on the web. Yeah, a lot of SharePoint stuff in Teams now. Yeah. Now, what do you think about them investing all this time teamifying like existent SharePoint experiences. Yeah, it's kind of a tough one because like, is it necessary? No, because all the SharePoint stuff is there. But at the same time, it is annoying when you try to access something from SharePoint in Teams and you can't do something with it. So, you know, just how long it took to get the copy link or the share button for files in, in Teams. And it's like, well, I can download, I can edit, I can copy it, I can move it. Like, why can't I do some of these other things? So I don't know, double-edged sword. It's a lot of effort to provide, you know, features in the in Teams. But at the same time, for a lot of people that use uh, Teams may not have all that, in, you know, uh, deep knowledge of SharePoint. And the whole point is that they shouldn't have to, right? Because they're going through Teams. So now one thing I'll tack in there is now we're getting to a point where Teams has been around long enough, right? It's been a few years now where these are features that are coming online in SharePoint in an era where Teams already exists. So what, do you think we're going to get to a point where a SharePoint feature launches concurrently with the ability to have that same experience in Teams, or is it always going to be get it out the door as quickly as possible? Like, how close yeah. do you feel like we're... <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. Because uh, there's still a good amount of things that they have to catch up on for Teams, uh, and there's still more features rolling out for you know the, the pure lists and SharePoint experience. So I think they'll probably be catching up for a little while. Sure. But that's yeah. something, hopefully a North Star that somebody's looking at. Yeah, definitely. Um, next up, we've got the SharePoint navigation switcher. So with the new nav switcher uh, feature, users are going to be able to, to easily customize their team site by changing the navigation's orientation and visibility to achieve a different look and feel, different layouts, different alignment styles. Now, uh, navigation switcher kind of gives this implication of like, is this something to do with like the, the SharePoint app bar on the left side? But it's not. This is we're talking about really kind of specifically focusing on like team sites, modern team sites. The big demarcating feature has been the left rail of, you know, home, recycle bin, 
uh, site contents. So this is uh, ostensibly unlocking the ability to move the navigation from the left side of the screen up towards the top and vice versa. Uh, what do you think about that? Where are we, where are we landing on this? I mean, I know that uh, I get the question all the time from people as to how come their site only has a quick launch and how come, how do I, why don't I get the drop down menu at the top? So uh, it means people don't know what the site types that they're asking for and what the implications are there. But if this gets them around that so that they stop complaining about it, I'm good. I'm good with it. <laughs> and that is a good point. This would unlock mega menus for team sites, which have kind of ultimately been uh, set aside to, to live without. Um, for quite some time. Now, one thing they did tack on there as well is that it's also going to turn enable the ability to actively hide the navigation. So that's kind of interesting. So you get kind of like these these single use sites, you know, like I don't need the navigation. I just need you to land on this page and understand where you are. Yeah, if you get if you get full width out of that, that would be a benefit too. I think some people get into the team site space, start building their stuff and they go, how come I can't get rid of this thing on the left side? I want that full width of a communication site, but I already put 17 hours into building this out. So I don't want to rebuild it. So again, the know what you do, know what you chose before you move forward with it. But uh, if you didn't, um, here's a potential workaround for it. So um, yeah, I think this is a good one. It's a good opportunity for us to welcome our very first sponsors, ShareGate. No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, because we've used that one quite a bit, uh, both be you know before my time with MTC and now my time with MTC again. Where, you know, somebody asks for a team site, like they want the email address or they want the mailbox, they want the the, the team site, they want the notebook, they want all that. Um, but then they get stuck with the left rail navigation, and they're like, "I hate it. This is terrible. I want to go backwards. Bad. This is want both, <laughs> right?" Or they'll, they'll pick the team site, but then I'll send them to the lookbook catalog to kind of pick a design they like. And there's like five team site templates and like 80 communication site templates. That's the, the worst The redheaded stepchild. Yeah, I know. It really is. It really is. <laughs> I wonder if that'll be something that changes with the lookbook with this feature so. coming online that they'll just oh, kind yeah. of blend the two. Yeah, maybe. I guess we'll see. They have to do screenshots for both of them. Yeah, you know, like mm -hmm. this is what it looks like with the left navigation. <laughs> and, then, and then so for all those designers working on that project that's called job security right there that's that's for version 3.0 they're working <laughs> on two right now all right next up we've got sharepoint the uh the the hub to hub site association so of course this is the ability to associate a sharepoint hub site to another hub site now when we originally talked about this matt you know there was this open question around just how much like what's what's the hub of hubs going to kind of bestow upon associated hubs because right now if you would take a site and you associate with the hub there are some inheritable properties you can inherit permissions you can inherit look and feel uh you roll become up. exactly right you would inherit uh, or you roll up news um yep. so there's so there was this open question around what it was going to look like to associate a hub with hubs like what was going to trickle down potentially two layers, you know, are we going to crack open this, this problem that we faced in the 2013 and down era, the 2016 and down era of like sub, 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 Save yourself. You're drowning. Oh, he's back. Welcome. It's nice to see you again. It's dark down there. Yeah. It's scary down there. Sub sites are the worst. Um, so it, there was some open questions around that. Of course, you, we know the answer now, and that's just the one thing, which is search. Pretty much. This is purely just about unlocking search for this web of sites. Yeah. You know, so the top of mind, what comes to mind for you? So I think a lot of people are just going to assume that this is, if you picture two hub sites next to each other, this is the parent hub that's going to connect the two in like a tree diagram. And in reality, that's not happening. It's really just going to be two hub sites with a dashed line between the two of them, which is, you know, may or may not be what somebody's looking for. So I, I'll be interested in seeing what people do with this um, and uh, what kind of takes tips and tricks they kind of take out of it. Cause it does seem reasonably limiting from what it, you know, the description of it. It sounds like, oh, that's exactly what I've been waiting for. I need that hub hub, you know, experience. And it's like, yeah, but do you really know what it does? So I guess we're, we'll, we'll see what, uh, what happens on that one. So I think that's a bit of a, to be continued. Yeah. This feels like a give an inch, take a mile kind of thing. Like they're giving us 
like they're like fine you can hub hubs uh but it's just search you know and i think they're thinking right. that might be enough for now but part of me also thinks this is them testing the waters of okay let's give them just the bare minimum and see where they screw where <laughs> right, they scream yeah, loudest yeah. yeah agreed uh jumping over we've got uh microsoft teams uh i don't what's what fluid components Flu- i don't I, know that i'm not familiar with fluid floop Loop, 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 loop components. Oh, God. Yeah, makes sense. Loop components are becoming available in Teams chats. This is going to allow users to send a message with tables, action items, or a list that can be co authored and edited by everyone that's a part of this conversation. Directly from their beautiful, losable OneDrive for business. And of course, we've got active concerns about this. This idea that Very. like loop components are ultimately owned by an individual. So it's going to be interesting to see how right now, that evolves. Sure. Wow. I mean, they're not going to be able to put that back in the the, the bottle. Well, that's true. Yeah. Very valid point. Yeah, you're going to put it on there, and I'm wondering, you know, how do you? What's the UI that solves for that? You know, let's say they unlock one day the ability to put loop components into a SharePoint site to be owned by a SharePoint site. Yeah. Is it just going to intelligently figure out based on like you're doing it in a channel, therefore it goes into the SharePoint site, you're doing it in a chat, therefore it's OneDrive. I mean, I it seems obvious enough. I think it might have just solved it for them. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it seems obvious enough that if like if you create uh, you know, a Microsoft 365 group and you create something loop related in that group that it's owned by the group, right? Just like a list is, right? The list happens to live in SharePoint. I don't know where, you know, does it end up being a, like a something you see in site contents or does it end up being in a library that's called like, you know, live components or loops or, or something like that? Sure. I, I don't know. That's what they do with uh, forms right now, if I'm not mistaken. Like if you create a form that's owned by a group and have like attachments, it'll create a folder called like, Oh, I didn't know that for the attachments. That's interesting. Yeah, that makes sense yeah. though. Um, but yeah, I could see that being, you know, you, you have a, I'm sure that I would hope that there'll be like a loop, you know, web part for having a live Ooh. loop on a, on a page and that being able to cool. show that off. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, it's obvious about, like, though the, to me, you know, like it, it, it does feel obvious, you know, and you would think given, especially that uh, you've always been able to embed an Excel table into a SharePoint page and define just the table. Yep. This feels like a no brainer. You're right. Well, and then loops are going to be different things, right? So like if you create a loop in a chat right now, it's a file um, in your OneDrive. Another one, it's another file in your OneDrive. So presumably it would be a document library for loops. You know, you got your documents library, you got your site pages, and you'll have a loops library or something similar to that. Or I mean, I hope, please don't make this a OneDrive only experience. Please. No, I can't imagine them stopping here. I imagine, I mean, this is going to be two ignites from now. They'll announce it for the third time and then we'll get Correct. it. Correct. And then we'll get it eight months after that. <laughs> uh, so sticking with Microsoft Teams for a moment uh, more, we've got those new fluent emoji styles coming to Teams emojis and reactions. Wait, fluent, fluid, fluid, fluent, fluent, Flu- fluent, fluid. Oh, not loop, not loop. Oh, okay. Got it. All right. <laughs> This is where the magic of marketing comes to life. Uh, now, of course, <laughs> for anybody that, way too similar. that somehow missed uh, the news on International Emoji Day, which is a thing, uh, Microsoft announced that they were redesigning, that they had redesigned all 800 plus emoji uh, in a new fluent style, so three-dimensional. The next part to that is that Windows 11 launched a month, two months ago. Yeah, and October then, 11th or something? Yeah, right. Yeah, something like that. And there was a little bit, not controversy, because <laughs> we're not burning towns down based on... I mean, on... I think in the Bugler household, it was pretty controversial. You may have had I'm... your pitchforks and your torches out. I mean, do you see that sword back there? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yes. What is that? Why do you... Anyway, moving on. To be clear... Uh... <laughs> But no, there was a little bit of a hubbub, um, not just me, that uh, there were actually two different versions of these redesigned emojis. Uh, Mm -hmm. There was the 3D emoji, which was 100% of Microsoft's marketing. Anytime you saw anything about emojis, it was the 3D emojis. But when Windows 11 launched, presumably with those new emojis, what did we see? Redesigned emojis, but two-dimensional. 
They were flat ish. Unbelievable. And like that, they were fine, but it wasn't the fun, jazzy 3D. And, <sighs> but don't, t- don't tell me that's something else. And then it turns out to be, you know, not what I expect. You know, and this is where like marketing and design and engineering like really need to come together on this. So I'm, I'm going on record. I'm hoping we're going to see 3D emojis come to teams. We know that new the new redesigns are coming one way or the other. But so uh, as need that kind of... 3D fingers crossed emoji. All right. That's that's the real goal. <laughs> and I mean, to be clear, like there was a reason teams add where they showed 3D reactions, which brings us, of course, to these expanded reactions that are coming online. 800 possible reactions to a Microsoft Teams message. Matt, you disagree. All right, Slack one. users, you got what you wanted. Yeah, I did. Uh, but yeah, they, they did show the reaction. They showed the 3D one, so I'm hoping. It's not even like I'm going to be impacted by this. So we're going to have different experiences and different... Oh, my God. Is it, uh... Yeah. It's consistency, overrated. <laughs> <laughs> Under, underrated underappreciated when it mm. actually comes to life yeah uh final thoughts and emojis before we punt none all right microsoft teams sticking with it just a little bit longer here the search results page in teams of course for those of you that use teams you know when you run a search right now uh unless you're already getting this steady rollout you're getting the search results in the left navigation pane confined to this tiny little fingernail of an experience, but the search results page is going to be the whole thing, which is good, right? Matt? It is a vast improvement over the awfulness that has been team search for four or five years now. And it's, I mean, it, what we're seeing here is it's going to be tapping into the Microsoft search experience, which of course Microsoft has been working on for quite some time at this point. Um, you know, so this is not just about being able to find messages. It's also being, it's also being able to, find people. It's also about being able to find the answers to questions with the Q&A component that's available for admins. Uh, it's about finding files that are stored in OneDrive and SharePoint. It, the hope here is just to improve and kind of streamline and unify the experience across all search pages, not just in Teams, but to align it with what we see on the Office Hub at office.com uh, from OneDrive, from SharePoint. Yeah, it's a, it's a major improvement. It's one of the it's a breath of fresh air. We've been waiting for it for years at this point. It's it's time. It is time. You know, this feels like one of those things that you and I have talked about on this show for it a year. It feels like it is. It, it, we, it has been, been. Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's go ahead and pivot over to OneDrive for a moment here. There's not a ton mm-hmm. happening in OneDrive here, but this one we kind of agreed was an interesting one. This is a nice quality of life improvement. Um, so you know, Matt, I'll ask you when you are on, you know, the, the liberal medias, New York times.com, uh, <laughs> I get that for free. Thanks to that Amex that you talked me into. So, you yeah, know, it's you're worth welcome. It. <laughs> Go on when you're on New York times.com or, you know, whatever, uh, and you find an article and you like it, and you want to share it with somebody. <laughs> What do you do? I don't send it to them because they probably already passed their five free articles for the month. So it's just, <laughs> you you just know. that's for you. That's a yeah. little, no, my, little my, nugget for you. My uncle hasn't figured out. I like to send him things. He hasn't figured out how to, you know, uh, disable his, uh, his ad blocker. So he can continue watching or reading. <laughs> hypothetically, Sorry, they, watching. <laughs> Hy- hypothetically, they haven't read through their five free articles. How do you share ah, that? Oh, okay. I would uh, click the, uh, the URL in the address bar and then I would control, sorry, command C. Mm-hmm. Command C is right. Yeah, you copy and Thank paste you. it and you know, send it to you know, text or WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger or whatever. You just drop yeah. the link in there and you send it on their way. Yeah, definitely. Uh, would you believe me if I were to tell you that that wasn't something you could do in OneDrive up oh, until recently? Been infuriating that you can't do that. Yeah, because I mean, you think about I'm looking at it. I see the file. This is the file I want to share, and I would like to share it with somebody. Uh, I mean, like I've been, don't you dare yawn. I don't coughed. you, I oh, was it a cough? <laughs> I've muted and everything so that you wouldn't. Anyway. Um, anyway. Uh, so you, 
like I, I've been victim to this where somebody copies the URL, drops it into a Slack chat or a Teams chat or an email and says, here it is. Here's the thing I was just looking at. I copied the URL. That's the yeah. file. It doesn't work. Yeah, it's not good. But according to Microsoft, this is coming online. This ability to, you're looking at a file in OneDrive, copy the link, share it with somebody, and that that link is a link that anybody within the organization can use. So this it, is a, I mean, it's a little scary from a permission standpoint, but you know, whatever. Who cares about that? Uh, now, the important caveat that we'll flag in here, because Matt's absolutely right, tenant admins can specify whether the link that shows up in the address bar for files is shareable within the organization or not. So you can, there is an option, and it's a GUI option at that, to my understanding. GUI, 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 GUI. That you'll be able to determine that that's not a link that you can just copy and paste and send. But right. I think it would be fair to say that for most cases within an organization, that's a come up. That's a net positive. Agreed. Yeah, definitely. Do you feel like this is something your users would appreciate? Probably. Yeah. Do of you, course, it'll probably just over uh, influence the, um, you know, more addiction to OneDrive. But that's true. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> For my organization, it would just be more controversy about, you know, which which tool when, mm. you know, because because we're, of course, we're a best of breed workshop. So it's not just SharePoint and OneDrive. It's also best of breed. Listen to you guys qualifying yourself so high and mighty that we take whatever the best tool is out there that doesn't integrate with the system <laughs> we've invested the most money into. And then you're all high and mighty about it, too. Yeah, that's right. I, I stand up here and I. This is what it looks like. I look down, <laughs> I look down on all of you. <laughs> all right, well done. <laughs> but no, I think it's it's definitely something that this is a welcome change, and I, I think that my users are going to appreciate this. Um, I think that there's going to be a little bit of hand holding as we talk about it with kind of the the executive stakeholders that this is a good problem. But I honestly think yeah. that they're the audience that wants this most. Yep. Yeah, that's definitely true. <laughs> Um, all right, so let's go ahead and jump over to stream. Mm -hmm. uh, the, finally. So, uh, finally. So we've been talking about this for quite some Ooh. time. Stream is pending this massive overhaul, and we've been waiting to see the tangible results of that. Right. Uh, the updated web player for video and audio files in SharePoint, Teams, Yammer, and OneDrive for GovClouds. So this is big. Yeah. Uh, so this Couldn't is coming come soon enough. Yeah. You know, so this is how you know that it's maturing, this rollout, mm -hmm. because we're seeing it come online for government um what do you think so i think this is just a long time coming and we <clears throat> we need it uh we need to actually see what the um the fruit is of this whole stream transition uh especially since we kind of have this interregnum where the old stream is coasting until it's retired officially and the new stream really isn't there yet so you have this old admin center you have this old uh, video portal that just will not be there moving forward, but we don't have the new solution yet. Um, so this is uh, the sooner the better is all I got to sure. say. So. Yeah. And I think one of the things that I'll also flag here that's not necessarily um, celebrated as often, but should be is that this is this update. Uh, not only is it a nice shiny look and feel, but it also uh, more appropriately aligns with accessibility for keyboard navigation and screen readers, which mm. is, Great. I mean, that's yep. more of that. Yep, I agree. Uh, and then the the last bit of news where, before we get into kind of what you alluded to in the uh, the stinger on the upfront here, um, Alec on the web, ah, Matt, am I crazy? I, f I feel like... Dude, this has been forever. I swear I just talked about this. Outlook on the web, the ability to share an email, right? Okay, I'm just gonna, like, I can share an email to Teams. I can't do that right now. Apparently not. I thought you could, but keep saying it's on its way out, but it's not there yet. I don't know. <laughs> they just keep running into bumps. They're like, no, we haven't so. got away. This is like me getting into a hot tub. There's so many of these key features, though, like the shared a teams one that has been such, such a hot topic since they first announced it and uh, shared channels in Microsoft yeah. Teams, um, the, the street, all the stream stuff like that they've announced at this point so long ago. And I realized that, you know, well, some of them were announced after COVID started and I can give right. like the little bit of a slide for, you know, if it was announced before COVID, then there was no prediction possible that you could have for just the roller coaster of project management implications throughout that. But if it was announced afterwards, like I don't have a whole lot of, I don't know, 
super th sympathy. sympathy there yeah <laughs> because it's like all right you know what you're in for at this point you know what the features are that you want to roll out and uh instead of saying it's going to be due in, you know if watch this get pushed out another two months like so don't tell us it was due in november of 2021 when like you know the last two weeks of the month most people are probably out of the office anyway uh at yeah. least in the u.s tell us it's not going to be available to january and it's kind of like i've always noticed when you go to a, a theme park and they have the estimate of how many minutes it's going to be while you're in line. Sure. Almost guaranteed they overestimate by like 15 to 25%. Sure. To because like then when you get to the front of the there. line, you're like, oh man, that was a 30 minute wait. It was supposed to be, but I was, I, I got on the ride in 20 minutes and you walk away yeah. happy because your expectation was poor and your actual experience was positive compared to the expectation. So just give right. us lower expectations and we'll be fine. So everything I started swears. from here on out is going to be announced for 2025. Can't wait. Oh, <laughs> again, job security, dude. That's all I'm saying. Job I'm security. Going. Yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, and so that is... That was the news. The news. Is, was, you know, whichever. Um, yeah. All right. So I, I thought we would talk a little bit about uh, uh, a, sort of a notable retraction that Microsoft made. Um, did you did you hear about this one? Uh, the uh, I feel like Jimmy Fallon talking to Higgins right now. Uh, did you uh, <laughs> did you hear the thing about whiteboard? I'm Higgins. <laughs> I'm speaking right now, so yes, that's fair. <laughs> I'll be Higgins next. It's fine. Fine. <laughs> um, you were, we're talking about uh, the whiteboard thing, right? Yeah, Microsoft whiteboard and how uh, the Windows so, app. Yeah, tell me about this because I I heard about it the first time around and it was like the sky was falling. Like Microsoft had reneged on uh, uh an engagement like they had you know proposed to somebody and then pulled it away <laughs> yeah right like, what what actually is so, happening can you explain I mean, I this to me i would definitely not go that far so there was a big to do back in uh no pun intended uh back in october about <laughs> microsoft whiteboard the new uh, enhanced uh, ui the, the all this all this new stuff and it was going to be coming with uh, windows 11 so the windows 11 app the whiteboard app was updated to the new ui Teams got the new UI. I'm uh, almost certain that uh, iOS got the new UI. I think Android got an app, maybe. Was yeah, that, that was my understanding as well. Is that it yeah. had channel availability? Because I, I know I know Android was really behind on on the whiteboard stuff, but um, apparently uh, there are the feature set for whiteboard in uh, the new experience on Windows 11 uh, provided enough feedback that the um, the product group actually announced this week or late last week that they're going to be rolling back the Windows 11 app. Now, just the Windows 11 app. So if you happen to use Whiteboard in Teams, so especially in Teams meetings, if you use it in the web browser or if you use it on mobile, they're not going to roll that back. Uh, <clears throat> but the Windows 11 native app is going to be rolled back to what it was before because there were a couple key features that were uh, not included in the in the quote unquote upgraded version, and uh, so now you'll have sort of two versions of the app to work with while they work on the Windows 11 app, you know, update. Or I guess it would be the whole UI update, but for the time being, kind of have like a classic version on Windows 11 where you can still get some of those right. old features, and those old features can still be used, and you can still benefit from them in the other experiences. But you know, if you're using, I don't know, like a Mac, like I am. Uh, you're kind of uh, out of luck on that stuff. But um, yeah. I don't know. I'm kind of curious, Sean, what's, what's your thought on a, on a rollback of a major? Because this is a big splash. Like it was, it was. major. Uh... I mean, yeah. One, whiteboard has kind of been like a marquee feature update that they've been railing about for quite some time. And then, uh, you know, for Ian uh, to come out here, and just as a quick aside, uh, for anybody that doesn't know, uh, Ian uh, McCoodle, uh, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing last name, sorry, Ian, uh, who, who tweeted this announcement of the rollback. He's the head of product for Microsoft whiteboard for teams and surface. Um, so, you know, this is definitely somebody who, you know, has an intimate understanding of where we're at and where we're headed. What this felt like to me, Matt was the, it was like an accelerated version of the one note debacle, like the, my, the, the modern one note. Do you remember oh, when they retired? Yeah, I do. Yeah. 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 When they were going to retire they, the, uh, the, they were going to retire the office 365 app for the windows native app. Right. Exactly. Right. Right. And, which, you know, it was oh. like a, it was a modern experience. Uh, it was a, a nice shiny app. It was slick. It aligned with kind of the windows UI that they were pushing at the time. But it was and, almost bit, meant more for personal use and like it wasn't right. really an enterprise level solution. Right. Exactly right. It it was you know a one note by any other name was their logic. Yeah. But the reality in terms of like functionality, I mean, they were 
key things that you simply could not do. Yep. Definitely. Um, and, and for them to say, you know, like we're going to sunset this feature rich, you know, I mean, surely we should have known that like the cult of one note was going to be upset at that. And, and, and one think, note legitimately has a cult. I mean, like whiteboard oh, yeah. isn't quite there yet, but one note has its, you know, especially in the education field, just like some, very dedicated, large user base of people that expect, you know, all those features and have grown to, to live, uh, you know, expect them, I guess. To, yeah, to absolutely depend on them. And of course, if anybody's hearing this for the very first time, this is a like a four year old uh, adventure. They've since changed their mind and they're now sunsetting the Windows version of OneNote in lieu of the Office version of OneNote because that's just what's what the people wanted. It made more yep. sense to invest in the feature rich version to try and get it to definitely the, the end goal they wanted to. And I, I think what we're seeing here is a very similar thing, but with lessons learned. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That so, was so well done. That was, that was perfect. <laughs> uh, but for, you know, I think what we're seeing here is that on an accelerated timeline with lessons learned um, people, it, people want these things, especially as that we upgrade to hold on to some key features and functionality. I think what we saw was enough feedback was received that Microsoft was like, this is one of those things. And I don't even actually yeah. know what features didn't make it from old whiteboard to new whiteboard, because as far as I could tell, it was pretty slick, but yeah, I did. I did read up on it. There, there, there were some foundational things that like they decided they didn't think that they were necessary moving forward. And I can't remember at this point, cause I don't, I don't use a uh, windows, um, uh, at, well, at all, for that matter, uh, when it comes to using whiteboards. Unless so, you're yeah. writing a book. Yeah. Well, well that, that, that Surface laptop hasn't opened in like, you know, months at this point. So I don't really have to worry about that. But yeah, no, uh, there were there were legitimate concerns there. And there are serious features that they decided to sunset for whatever reason. And, and, you know, probably should have put it out to some sort of test group. Or I don't even know if they sent it out to TAP, to be honest. Um for the early access, but even so, like there's a, you know, I don't know, hundreds of organizations out there that are on tap, but that doesn't mean that like the tap people actually help or like for, uh, try for or like a, a new yeah, audience provide feedback uh, or anything. What's, yeah. what's tap just for the, for the new so, audience. So uh, tap is the technology adoption program. Is that what it is? Technology? Yeah. Adoption or acceleration. I can never remember, but it's, yeah, a, it's, it's basically an advanced a group. Yeah. I'll let you describe. No, it. no, please. You're yeah, because you're in tap. I am not. Uh, so it, it's a, it's an early access uh, ring or tenant type uh, that you can kind of get the dog food version of, of an app, but not all of them. Not everything is in there. I, I don't really fully actually understand the the, uh, the logic of like some apps are in there at certain rings and some are in there at other rings and some aren't in there at all. And I, I don't really know, but. Uh, so like you guys are trusted advisors, Microsoft will like roll something out and occasionally yeah. they'll reach out and be like, hey, correct. The last you for your do feedback. you like this? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But this did not, as far as you can tell, this did not come to pass through tap. Not that I'm aware of. I mean, it could very well have, but again, I don't, I don't really use OneNote very much on that tenant to begin with, or uh, sorry, uh, sure. whiteboard uh, on that tenant. So like, I wouldn't even know. And it's not like there's like some sort of mass email distribution that goes out and says, Hey, there's this new feature, go test it. Cause like none of us, none of us would have any time to do anything if we were asked to test all the new stuff that rolls out in the tap because. Sure. You know, but at least some know. awareness component, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I don't know. I can't hold that against them. That communication style is, is very difficult to deal with. Sure. Um, no, I hear that. You know, I know that's true with the NBP distribution lists as well. They go on forever. <laughs> um, so what do, you, what do you think about this? Like, uh, you know, this happened. Uh, yeah. If you're looking at it from an outsider's perspective and knowing what, what the uh, the issues here are, like what's your your viewpoint uh, on the, the change makers here? Setting aside the you know, could have, would have, should have, of how do we try to identify what these things are in advance? I think they made the right move. I think they handled it the best way possible. The head of products in that space comes out and it's like, hey, gang, we're rolling this back because we have gotten some feedback and it's well-warranted feedback. They're not just saying, hey, hold on to the new one and we're going to improve it. They're saying, let's get you back to where you were. Yep. And, you know, I think that maybe like extra credit bonus points might have been if you still want to download it, if you're fine with those compromises, here's where you can download the, the exe but that's you know depending on how much they're re-architecting they may, that may not necessarily be something they want to build while the train is moving and i get that yep. um but no i i think to throw back to what i said earlier i do genuinely think that this response feels like uh, a lessons learned from maybe not specifically one note but kind of the the arc of we've but rolled something right, out yeah. and people don't like it 
Yep. Smells a lot like one note though, is a, I think is a fair. It feels really familiar. Yep. Yeah, definitely. So but not to, uh, to make the, uh, the back and forth, uh, boring again, but like, I completely agree with you. I think, uh, kudos to the, the whiteboard team for, for doing what they did here where they, you know, for the, especially the, the core native app being the one that people can get into and do what they need to yeah. roll that back. And then, you know, the web version can be dealt with however it needs to be dealt with. But sure. I say, uh, I say, you know, uh, applaud for the, uh, um, the transparency. Yes. And that's the big thing. Like let's celebrate that transparency because there's not enough of that. And it's yep. really, really nice to see it when it's there. Yeah, you know? exactly. It, yeah. That's exactly how I feel about it too. So let's, uh, so, I mean, if you're game with it, uh, let's go see if there's any, I don't think we've got a ton of questions here, but we've got the peanut galleries in full force. <laughs> uh, I mean, says, well, there goes our Natty Ice uh, sponsorship, which damn, I not again. I, I don't know. I think we can still go. We lost PBR like, last week. I don't know what we're going to do next true. week. You know? God, what am I doing? I know, right? <laughs> That's uh, I bet you we could still reach out to them and be like, "Hey, couldn't this be like a great like you know arc? We we didn't like it, and then we try the the nat. Oh, oh what's this right here? Natty <laughs> ice uh, wine cooler. <laughs> <laughs> we need to try all the different seltzers. I bet I I bet you we could do that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, and then uh, Brian uh, jumps in. Uh, already has the the full Oops. page uh, search at work. Um, yeah, there we go. And, yep. And the reviews are good. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think we're all on the same page here. This is it's a nice change of pace. It's a good usability improvement. Yeah. Um, what did you have? What did you find? Oh, th- th- I thought this was great. So on the opposite of your uh, best in breed, we got the worst in breed or least in breed for being in uh, GCC DOD or GCC high. Heaven for heaven forbid. <laughs> <laughs> it's you know there's definitely some like no yeah problem. there's there's some unexplored trauma that comes with operating in the gcc dod space mm. yeah <laughs> um and then of course the 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 controversy this is the controversy you know it feels like the the whiteboard recall all exclamation points and it's not <laughs> yeah total recall i think, I think the the internet unsurprisingly overreacted to this you know obviously it's never any fun when you get something and they take it away from you like i yeah. matt you and i just spoke at um the minnesota 365 user group they have an admin day which is kind of a big uh you know now it's digital it used to be an in-person bonanza of a conference where you know we would talk about like user adoption it was really kind of focused on the application of microsoft 365 and one of the things that i talked about was um, the collaborative features that exist within Power Automate specifically. Mm-hmm. And Microsoft just announced a bunch of really great um, steps in that direction with respect to like commenting on steps. So you can understand, like, you know, leave a little note on like this particular action, Power Automate. Um, and then that you could also have like co presence. You could see when other people were in the same flow as you. And I thought it was great. I was like, this is perfect timing. I'll talk about that because it's a collaboration presentation. I took some screenshots just to be on the safe side. And the very next day I'm going to present and guess what wasn't there? No, really gone. Just completely gone. Huh? This happens to me all the time. So I I wish I could say I was more surprised that these things happen, but they do. Yeah. Um, So just know that if something is in preview gang, yeah. Don't love it. Yep. Don't don't, (laughs) don't don't, fall in love. Don't love it. Yeah. Don't, Uh, don't name the puppy. Yep. Right. (laughs) Yeah. That's funny. Jimmy Fallon's happy because he doesn't use SharePoint. Uh, yeah, they get well, degrees. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very nice. All no, right. Man. Well, that's probably that's probably good for uh, for this week. I know. Uh, so next week we're gonna take uh, Monday off because that is the day after uh, the holiday weekend for us, and I have a feeling that nothing is going to happen between now and then. Anyway. Um, I guess we'll we'll see what happens. The, the funny part was that there were a number of items in the uh, the roadmap that actually said launched already that were due at the end of this month. And I have a feeling a lot of that's because it's like the internal deadline is actually last Friday, right? Yeah. Not, it's, you know, not the 30th of November. already on vacation today. Yeah, exactly. People are gone. Then we'll be back for two weeks in December and then we'll be gone for another three or four weeks after that. So, uh, yeah, I think that's probably where things are right now, but. All right, cool. So uh, next week is a no-go for us. Uh, Sean, I think you're still going to figure out what you want to do for the 6th because I will be on a plane, I think, at that point. Yeah, I already hired the the... fire dancers. 
Oh, perfect. Okay, excellent. All right. I'm very so they're gonna like breathing fire or like you know what, what sword swallowers. What's what's going on? You're gonna have to tune in to find out. I'll have to watch it afterwards because I can't. I won't be here live. Sorry, <laughs> but you know it's all right. Um, yeah. So I will be at the M365 Collaboration Conference starting on the sixth. Um, got a couple sessions I'll be talking about on Microsoft Teams there. So uh, if you haven't already, uh, you can still um, get your ticket and hang out in Vegas. They actually just announced the big party on the Wednesday evening. I say big. I did hear a good amount of conversation about social distancing and um, bigger room for a smaller population or something along those lines. But um, I guess we'll see what happens. Did and, they announce um, a musical guest? Uh, I did not see the details, actually. I don't know exactly what's on that. but The last time know. I went which I think you were there. Uh, who was it? Um, the B 52s. No, you were there the year before I was. Oh yeah. That must I, been, I think that was 2018. That was just before they rebranded the SharePoint conference to yeah. the, yeah, the M365. Um, yeah. regardless, it'll be a great time. Matt, forgive me. There's a, uh, uh, they can still use your name as a code, right? Yep. Yeah. There's actually a link in the uh, description. If you want to join up, uh, say 50 bucks to, uh register and uh, if i see you there great and if not we'll uh, hopefully see you again sometime in the future when things get further back to normal when it comes to attending conferences and whatnot so yeah right on well nice. i think we're in good shape here uh mm -hmm. as always thanks to everybody who's jumped into the comments if you don't join us live uh, you should know that it's a good conversation we got a good group here uh yeah, agreed. And it, even if you don't want to join us live you can always jump in when we schedule these things days in advance to ask the questions you'd like us to, to you know, reflect on and ruminate and talk about. Uh, yeah. Uh, so as always, uh, a like and a subscribe is much appreciated. Uh, you, you can always leave a comment down below, please. Keep the um, conversation going. You can also hit the uh, the dislike button because we can't see it anymore. And uh, <laughs> please, please don't. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> And uh, yeah, awesome. So uh, Sean, happy Thanksgiving and I will see you again sometime in December. Sounds good.